It used to be that as business people we could shake hands and do a deal and work together and be happy that everything would stick. Um, and, and there's still an element of that in business, but today the world's very complex. There's always a range of risks and issues, and sometimes relationships can break down. Uh, I come across a range of clients where they're having issues, uh, they're joint shareholders in a business, in a company, um, and they want to know how to exit or settle uh, unresolved issues, and they don't have any recipe sheet to resolve it. A shareholders agreement is a recipe sheet. It's, it's in addition to your company constitution uh, or your partnership. Uh, so let's go through three areas of a shareholders agreement. It's much more complex and detailed than these three areas, but this will give you an idea of the things that you need to cover. The shareholders agreement needs to, to cover off on business intent. It needs to cover off on your decision-making processes, your obligations, the governance and reporting requirements. It also needs to talk about the transfer of shares and equity. What happens if a director retires, wants to leave? What happens uh, if a shareholder or a partner's employment is terminated? What happens in the event of death or permanent incapacity of a shareholder or partner? The second area of a shareholders agreement is covering off on some of the risks and issues. Um, and capital funding associated with your business. Here it's about ensuring the shareholders agreement provides for certain insurances that you might need to cover directors liability and working partners activities. The power to invoke a specific powers of attorney in certain events. The funding options of the company or partnership. In other words, should there be a call on shareholders for additional funds? Should the company be funded by debt in the first instance? When can you go outside the existing pool of shareholders to secure funds externally? Restraint of trade is another important area, as is conflict of interest. Also, valuation methods in the event of exit of one or other parties or taking on more equity. Finally, matters of exit, business succession, the conditions of exit. Um, if you've got a disagreement, what are the deadlock provisions? How, how should that disagreement be resolved? The dispute resolution procedures that should occur, and often there's time frames associated with all of that to ensure there's, there's fairness on both sides. There's a range of other issues associated with merger, acquisition, who's involved, uh, protecting the majority interest and the minority interest of a joint shareholder company that has a number of shareholders. So we have a checklist that will provide some of those key aspects uh, that need to go into a shareholders agreement. Remember, a shareholders agreement is only a piece of paper to help you communicate with your business partner or fellow shareholders in the event of risk or issues arising so that you can have a smooth transition and resolution of the issue.